Welcome to Lamora's Cards and Horrors, the best store for all your gaming and haunting needs. I'm Matthew, and today I'm going to be talking about getting into Hearthstone for both new and returning players. I recently got back into Hearthstone after taking a pretty extensive break, and with so many positive changes and great feedback from the community with the recent expansions, I wanted to create a guide for players like me looking for what was new. I'll be going over new features and quality of life changes, the big changes to gameplay and what to expect to see in your games, and the new progression systems and rewards you'll be earning. If you played during the first few years of Hearthstone, you were probably used to very bare bones changes and not a lot of social features or ways to acquire a lot of useful cards beyond spending money. But the game has had massive overhauls in the last few years. Buying packs is largely the same, done with either gold or money, but packs work a bit differently now. For each new set you open packs from, you'll be guaranteed one legendary somewhere within your first 10 packs, making this the best gold investment for dust and cards early on. This will work for any sets you haven't opened yet, so old expansions you didn't play apply to this as well. We now also have duplicate protection, both for legendaries and more recently for epics, so that when opening you'll only pull cards from those rarities you don't already have a playset of. Legendaries currently have a 1 in 20 chance of appearing in a pack, but the game also has a pity timer making it to where you're guaranteed to never go more than 40 packs of the same set without pulling a legendary card. The largest change to how sets specifically work is that the three expansions we get per year are now always pack sets typically with 135 cards and we no longer get adventures. But each set also has a mini set that releases about a month after that follows up on some of the themes with 35 new cards similar to how adventures used to work. These cards can either be crafted or bought as a package either for about 15 US dollars or 2000 gold. Card cosmetics have been adjusted a bit as well, with the very nice feature of being able to upgrade your cards from regular to golden versions by paying the difference in dust, making going from your regular legendary to a golden version cost only 1600 dust instead of 2800 like it used to. For the biggest piece of bling available, the game now also features diamond cards, a rare and uncraftable treatment that's only been given to a select few legendary minions so far. Some of these are available through in-game achievements, which I'll be going over later, or through specific promotions. Lastly, deck building has become much easier with the ability to share and copy deck codes and easily import other players lists to try out yourself. And these can even be shared now in the in-game friends list messages. And the deck auto builder AI has been revamped to try to build you the list with the current best win rate using the cards you own. Now that you've got some cards and built some decks, let's hop into some gameplay and see what's changed there. Probably the biggest change in modern Hearthstone has been that the classic set, the original cards released when the game first came out, is no longer kept in every standard environment. With Whispers of the Old Gods release, Hearthstone was split between Wild, which included all cards, and Standard, which was the classic and basic sets, plus the most recent two years worth of cards. Now instead of using those two sets as the baseline, we have the Core set, which is a selection of old cards that rotates each year, but that are also able to be used by all players for free, giving you a collection to pull from right away. The next change, which is maybe more obvious and arguably just as big, is that in 2020, Hearthstone released its first new class with Demon Hunter, bringing us to 10 total classes. Since then, Demon Hunter has been supported with new cards just like every other class, and there's talks of a new class potentially coming soon, so keep an eye out for that. Some other large changes have been the addition of new card types. Since the original release of Hearthstone, we've seen hero cards, quests slash quest lines, and locations. Hero cards are legendary cards that will change your hero for the rest of the game, permanently giving you a new hero power, usually having some sort of impactful battle cry, and gaining you some armor for your trouble. These have historically been very powerful cards that can swing the game in your favor, and usually only a few per year are released. Quests are technically spells that have the quest keyword, but it makes them function so differently they are essentially their own card type. These are one mana cards that start in your opening hand, and once played will have a quest tracker that will indicate progress you've made towards completing that quest. Each quest will have different criteria in order to complete them, and with quest lines they'll have multiple steps of criteria in order to get some rewards along the way. These will tend to have very powerful rewards at the end, 
and entire decks will be built around quests in order to get them complete as quickly as possible, as well as take advantage of their powerful payoff. With the next set, Murder at Castle Nathria, the first new card type since Frozen Throne will be added with locations. These are cards that take up a board slot and have an ability you can activate on your turn similar to a hero power. They have a limited amount of uses represented as durability and can only be activated once per turn and can't be used the turn after you activate them. They can't be attacked by minions and only specific cards will be able to destroy them, making them flexible ways to fill out your curve for value now or later. Now that you're caught up on some of the new types you may be seeing, you may be curious about what the current state of the game looks like and where the power level is at. And while I can't go over all the decks and highly played cards, I can say right now in both Wild and Standard we're seeing a pretty wide diversity of lists, and I'll show examples of what is impactful right now. While we still have more traditional value oriented minions, we have seen some shifts in design towards more complexity and to some extent more interaction. We have cards like Okani and Mutinous, both of which allow you to disrupt your opponent and take advantage of your game and meta knowledge. Powerful game changing build arounds like the now somewhat out of fashion Reno Jackson and the new Prince Renathal especially have changed metas immediately upon their arrival. And cards that give you a huge swing by taking over the board all in one go like Anixia and Gigafin can be found in the top end of many decks on the ladder. So since you'll be able to get some wins under your belt now, let's look at the progression and rewards you'll be getting. When finishing a ranked game, you'll get quite a few prompts for the various progression systems we currently have. When playing a class, you'll gain XP for that class, which unlocks the regular and golden versions of that class's core set cards. You want to get each class to level 10 to unlock all of those, with unlocks after that being purely cosmetic. Hearthstone now also has achievements, and you can get those for doing just about anything in the game. There are a lot of them. Most of them are purely for show, but we now have achievements that will grant you rewards like cards and cosmetics, and we may be able to use achievement points for rewards in the future. If you progress the quest you had in the game, you'll earn XP now instead of gold. This is because most gold you earn is now given to you via leveling the tavern pass by earning XP. With each major expansion, a new tavern pass is released, and as you progress through it, you'll earn gold and pack rewards, with bonuses and unique cosmetic items being available if you purchase the premium pass. Lastly, a few years ago, Hearthstone revamped its rank ladder, so things work quite a bit differently. For new players, the ladder will put you into the Apprentice League, which will have you play only against new players for the 40 Apprentice ranks. Here, you can't lose stars for losing, and once you move out of Apprentice rank 1, you'll get some packs and be put into Bronze, which is where you'll start each season from then on. From there, you'll work your way through 5 leagues, Bronze, Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond, all in the way to hit the top rank Legend. Ranks 10 and 5 of each league are rank floors, meaning you can't lose stars and drop below them once they've been reached. One of the best changes to ranked is that we now actually get pretty decent rank rewards that improve as you level, and your next season will start with a star bonus depending on how far you got up the ladder, making it much faster than climbing what's before. The new ranked experience is much more new player friendly and quicker, and with a bit of effort and luck, you'll be climbing up the ladder in no time. The past few years of Hearthstone have seen the game make tremendous changes, with the game now being very free to play friendly, getting continually new and exciting expansions, and giving players more rewards for their efforts than ever before. I wasn't able to even touch on the new game modes like Battlegrounds, Mercenaries, or Duels, which have all completely changed the Hearthstone formula for players to switch things up. I hope you found this video helpful, and that if you have, you'll subscribe to see more card game and horror content. Thank you so much for watching, and go find a deck you love.